handsome boyfriend, Dave. Yo. And together we uh, try to provide you with a um, show that has a lot of room for improvement. Uh, we also like to talk about suggestions for things for you to watch, hmm. listen to, cook, and eat. Yes. Because that's what we do. We watch. I we watch, watch our cook. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to listen to things. We like to listen to a lot of things and we go down many rabbit holes. Oh, the rabbit holes. It's amazing I can stick this huge head in that hole. Are you not overheated at this point? You're, yeah, you're right. I should get rid of... Dave runs at least two degrees hotter than your average human, which is super lovely to sleep You'll never walk through. alone, Liverpool. Never walk alone. Let me get rid of this. This is ridiculous. Oh. Now you're a pirate? I'm the dread pirate with Roberts. <laughs> what is... Yeah, you're right. I should get rid of that. I mean, I got sunglasses on. Who do I think I am? Like, I'm some sort of weirdo gang member? Uh, okay. Oh, oh, we're stunting. All right. Ah, ha, ha! Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, baby! This I came with it when I bought the game back, lo, those many years ago. So you And missed... that's as far as I go. Okay, today. so it, not a Sons of Anarchy casting call? Nothing like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like the third biker from... It's back. Oh we're my back. goodness, we're having technical difficulties. Oh my god, look at how much damage since we last saw him. Uh, the Wi-Fi in um, the attic, which is basically where we live, on the top floor of a townhouse. I prefer a penthouse. Yeah, it's the attic. Uh, sometimes the Wi-Fi is not so good. Yeah. Like just that. Hey, listen. It's not so good. The quality of the Wi-Fi matches the quality of the show. That is true. Um, so, worst talk we intro. Oh, uh, we did? You see, that's handsome boy. It's like the Dave. third time. This yeah. is just going to be a show of uh, intro. Uh, for those of you joining the live virtual studio audience, welcome. And uh, of course, we can, if you miss any of the shows, uh, on Abington Community Access YouTube, as well as. Uh, you know, lots of community access television. And, um, do we actually have people on, but I can't see them? Eight. Eleven. Do we, do we need to hit the thing? What do we mean? So what do you, you mean? See the... Oh, how? What? Like yeah. this? Yeah, you have to, like, do something. Oh, okay. There you go. Hello, Vicky. I don't know why it's not... Happening, sorry. Yeah, well, well, we can see you on our, our big screen. Listen, we were last week, we had some dental difficulties. Oh, can we talk about the dental difficulties, please? First of all, it turns out I am a victim of dumpster fire 2020. Uh, dentists, since they've gone back to work, since the pandemic has cleared dentists to work on patients, is it safe? I've seen a huge uptick, like double, triple, quadruple cracked teeth. Is and it safe? I am one of them. Uh, Marathon Man, is that what you were just doing right there? Yes. Little Laurence Olivier, mm -hmm. very nice. Um, so uh, I don't grind my teeth in my sleep, but what I do do is I clench. Do. I clench my jaw when I'm, oh, I don't know, upset, nervous, anxious, angry. Uh, so as one can imagine, I'm surprised not all my teeth are cracked. So anyway, there was a, there was a crack happening in a back molar, and I went and got an MRI for something, which is totally uh, fine. Hey, listen, I hate to interrupt, like, such an honor, but they're pronounced molar. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I was in an MRI, and they, you know, they put that halo thing over you, and it's right up against your chin. So what did I do for an hour while they were taking pictures of my brain and Clenched my spinal cord? Clenched your teeth. Clenched my teeth, nice. came out of there, and was in so much pain. Uh... You know, I've had uh, several root canals in my life. I've uh, inherited some bad dental DNA. We get what DNA, we deserve. And I didn't always go to the dentist, especially, you know, uh, in the late 90s. Sometimes you used to go to the back, the back alley, guys. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, it turns out I'm getting a root canal tomorrow. Um, I went to an endodontist who was lovely and cracked my tooth with medication and what have you, but uh, the pain relievers that my dentist prescribed were ridiculously um, not helpful. Well, uh, if and, by that uh, you mean it was like sticking a plug in your backside. Listen, 
painkillers and constipation are best friends. <laughs> and uh, it was just not a pleasant experience, so we're going to move on. But that's why we didn't have the show last week. I do apologize. It was uh, some tooth-related angst, and that is all over. But do yourself a, fla a favor. If you are like me, watch yourself with the clenching. Seriously, I, I catch myself all day long now doing it. That's why I just walk around like this all day. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, we do already have stuff uh, from the peanut gallery, who we love. Sean O'Brien, tooth pain is the worst. I've cracked four teeth from clenching. Sean, you and I are soul brother and sister, I'm telling you. It's just, oh, it's terrible. Oh, so root, terrible. Root canals are the best. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Vicki, you've had two. I'm pretty sure I've had five, or this is my fifth. That's where we're at. I had one. It wasn't a big deal. Hey, Paul Santoro. Pablo's here, everybody. Say hi to Pablo. Bob Tarasi here as well. Um, it's funny because uh, I would really rather pull it, but because the one on the other so, side was pulled. So would I. <laughs> there are children watching. And they'd rather pull it, too. <laughs> uh, I do need it for my bite radius and you know the top teeth need something to bite down on so we're gonna save it and she i'm learned, gonna go further into the learned, poorhouse she learned that term from watching jaws what what you've got here is a squalus with a bite radius the size of a buick it was richard dreyfus trying car to talk car about or whatever do you remember car the broad that came car caradon like, carcarious yeah. oh every every uh every creature in the sea is, t is taking a nibble out of this whale and he's like, it's a shark! And she's like, no, I don't know. Always listen to Roy Shiner. Shiner. Hey, funny thing. Yes. Roy Shiner was in Marathon Man, too. Um, well, those of you over the age of 50 he enjoy played, that. He played Dustin Hoffman's <laughs> brother. Um, so we want to get right to things we watched because I'm very excited. Today is the I'm official premiere. I'm so we could talk premiere. about Roy Shiner. Uh, the oh. official premiere of Woke on Hulu. Now, I know I've talked about Woke uh, quite a bit on the socials. Um, it's based on the comic strips and the, and the life of uh, comic artist Keith Knight, who goes by Keith, K-E-E-F, as one does. Um, uh, as one does? Yeah, you know, Keith Richards and Keith Knight. Both go by Keith. All right. Mm. Um, in any event, Keith and I uh, work together at WMW. We went to Salem State College together. We have been friends since college, and I love all his comics. And this particular television show uh, on Hulu talks about, you know, an incident that happened to Keith, and it's loosely based on his life because I don't think uh, Bottles' uh, 40s of old E were actually talking to him. But uh, we urge you all to watch it. It's pretty funny if it did. It's hilarious. Man. He has this moment, and he becomes woke. And, That's the name um, of the TV show. Things are talking to him, including a Sharpie, which is the voice of J.B. Smoove, oh, who is like my Smoove. favorite, favorite. Is it J.B. Smoove? It's Smoove. So it's Keith and Smoove. So I just white-splained all that, and I do apologize. But please check it out and let me know what you think. Um, I really, really, really like it so far. We have really? three, three episodes in. We really like it. Yeah. Uh, we're also still knee-deep in 12 Monkeys. There are four seasons, people! Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I got a I got nervous that they were going to lose me. Every once, time you think that maybe you're you, going to lose... Once the, once the, the doctor from, uh, from uh, Battlestar Galactica came on... Oh, oh yeah, we I were, we I were was, upset. Because he gonna... always plays such a, like nasty sort of mm. um what's the what's the doctor on uh, lost in space smith yeah he's kind of a dr smith guy. take the boy <laughs> oh, but, me, but, me. Uh, he me. turned out to be great and we're still watching so sorry we have been um you know really sort of binging that um otherwise we did watch another episode of lovecraft country on yeah. hbo yeah, it's a little strange. I do like certain aspects of the show very mm -hmm. much. Last uh, This week's episode, definitely an homage to Indiana Jones oh, movies. Oh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. As well stuff. as Goonies. Look I might add, little yeah, Goonies little in there. Um, but uh, oh, uh, Keith Bennett says you look like the 35th drummer of Skid Row. That's right. Mm -hmm. Spot on, This Keith. is to hold Spot my hearing on. aids in. 
<laughs> Jim Paracotti also giving us some Marathon Man quotes, which is very nice. Um, so this week's Lovecraft Country did have something new and exciting. There was a sex scene, and it was pretty hot. It's very hot. We're talking... Um, the whitest white guy. Yeah. And the blackest black woman. Oh, and the most beautiful. She is just so buxom and beautiful, I can't her even... She's orbs just are bigger ridiculously than my head, gorgeous. Each one. She plays uh, the, one of the main character's sisters on the show. And she's the singer, guitar player, if you've been watching at all. Um, I can't Maybe. remember her name right now. Ruby. Oh my god, my Auntie Bobby's Ruby. here! Hi, Auntie Bobby! Hello, Bobby, how um, are you? And yes, uh, as far as um, nookie scenes go on HBO television, that so far, my friend, is my favorite. Hey, man, they did it, it on the stairs. It was super hot and not... You know, gratuitous, like there wasn't a huge amount of it, but it was mm, mm, chef's kiss. It was lovely. I urge you all to watch it. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Corin Ashley about, is here. Mm, what do we owe? C'est bon. The pleasure. Very excited. C'est bon. I haven't seen Corin in a while. Corin Ashley, how are you, sir? Huh? Um, Corin also wears these when he's kickboxing. Not the Grand Theft really? Auto, mind you. Here. Yeah, he but, doesn't uh, represent Grove Street. He does Street. often rock this particular look as well. I'm when Grove Street, fool. When he's being super active and awesome, kicking butt. Um, we also had an uh, interesting thing. One of the things about our show is that we sort of molded it around the fact that everybody wants stuff to, recommendations on stuff to watch, stuff to listen to, and stuff to eat. At and, least that's what we tell ourselves. Right, but we actually had a social distancing uh, little uh, small family, C family hang on Sunday mm -hmm. uh, over this Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And all we talked about, we were trading shows we watched, oh, what we, watch we were this? listening to. Um, oh, you got to watch that. Told everybody about the uh, raw chicken salt bath. Like, you know, the, basically we were doing like a lot of our show. Only with, you know... Laughs. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, my dad being like, pull the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I'm trying to be, you he, know, I'm dad, trying to do the right he modeled, thing, Dad. Last year at Halloween, he modeled for jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> pull the tooth. You don't need these teeth. Listen, I love You don't need these teeth. Yeah. My dad is like your dad. He knows everything. Right? Right. And you're like, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You shut up. <laughs> Um, we haven't watched more of Raised by Wolves on HBO, the new Ridley Scott TV series. I think you snuck ahead at least one more episode than I did, but hmm. we've only watched, I've only watched one. So I'm far. telling you, I've watched three episodes. Or maybe two, maybe two. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm holding out hope. It's uh, only okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little it's underwhelming okay. for me. I'm not, not too thrilled with it. I will say this, uh, my honorary sister-in-law, because, um, you know, of us have, uh, are divorced in my, uh, extended family. Really? Including us. Oh so, well, we're not divorced to each other, obviously. Or from um, each other. Yeah. The... From each other. Yeah. Um, we don't, we're together, we have a blended family, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, so does my brother Patrick, aka Pity, and his girlfriend Caroline is my honorary sister-in-law. Because none of us are getting married anytime soon. We but not. we do have that family. So uh, sister-in-law Caroline recommended a couple shows that I wanted to pass along to you to see if you guys have watched. One, uh, I think they're both Australian shows starring Josh Thomas. One is Please Like Me and one is Everything Gonna Be Okay. So if I uh, have you guys watched either of those shows, not that I don't trust Caroline's recommendation, I do. Uh, but I was just curious what you guys you'd seen those shows because you guys are kind of highbrow and um you watch a lot of shows from like different countries and whatnot um i mean we watched bridget Naiman and we loved it and we shared that but i'm just saying it's it's nice to go out of the u.s well yeah we like television to, shows we like to like spread to out, out to like you know australia New Zealand. Yeah, well, that's England. because you want to be Australian. Other places where they speak or English. New Canada. Oh, speaking of you, uh, love wanting to be Taika Waititi and having an Australian slash New Zealand accent around the house, which is super fun. Um, Dave did his little DNA test. And guys, I was so surprised. <laughs> the diversity. 
<laughs> is mind boggling. No, but you did have Australia on there. There was just a couple of people who went to Australia. Oh. It's not like I'm Aboriginal. Okay, but you're related to them. Ergo, we can stay at their house. Yeah. Hey, good day. I'm your fourth cousin from the States. We're here to stay in your house, eh? Totally convinced right there. Throw another couple of shrimp on the barbie. Uh, yeah, so tell us what nationalities you uh, come from, David. Well, you might be surprised. <laughs> but, um... Russian? Ireland was a big one. Mm. Ireland was the biggest. And then Scotland. And then Wales. And then England. I mean, how far away are those countries from each other? I mean, they're all over That's the place. like Malden and Everett yeah. and Chelsea. And Revere, too. Wow! <laughs> so, so it was uh, pretty much on brand. Right. And then it, say. it was a little bit more Irish than I kind of thought, you know? Had I known that growing up in Charleston, I would have thrown it around a little bit more, you know? Yeah, yeah kid, I, what's I, up there, Harry? I was so Irish you actually were, believe it or not. Charlestown County Mayo. Um, speaking of Charlestown, can we talk? Oh, Nikki T is in the house. That's not a knife. Uh, Jim Paracotti, 7,000 miles to play Knifey Spoony. <laughs> Is that like slap and tickle? <laughs> um, Those Italians, you can't, I don't know. So I don't speak Italian. One of the things we did do on our holiday weekend. <laughs> hey, listen, can we mention? I just want a, a little mention of the Canadian Maritimes was also, a the Acadians uh, was part of my whole thing. Yeah, it's part like of mine too, actually, of, yeah. A lot, a lot bigger. Thunder? No, not at all, but it's just kind of surprising. Like, Why would you do that? It's still part of North America, so I'm not sure it's that pivotal. Yeah. I just want to mention the fact that Dave was talking about Charlestown. Boy, I'm glad I have a sweatband on. Let me just tell you, I'm every just time we cross the Charlestown line, David's accent goes full throttle. Not only that... But he's literally yelling in the street to people. No, I'm not. Every time. I do it. Oh, you did it this time, too. You went back to the car for something, or you parked the car. I left. You parked the car. Parked the car. I turn around and look. You Ruin. There we are. And we're back. Sorry wow. about that. I don't know. It's like we never left. Storms are brewing, and Wi-Fi signal is uh, a, like a weak tea at this it's point. It's a bluing. So um, we apologize profusely. Tachi is finally here. So Nikki T said that she did Ancestry.com and got 75% Italy. Only 75%? Don't roll your eyes. Who? Me or it or her? We can't call you Paisan. Just hey, me. up along get it each. In our hearts, Nikki T, you are 100%. Uh, Keith Bennett, I want to teach Dave how to properly fold a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like you're going to teach me to sing uh, dancing too. This is you know homage what? To keep I've been that. listening. I'm right. See, the reason I did this is so that you could read somewhat what this says on it. You know, we did because my melon is so uh, huge. When I actually do the the triangle that mess method, mm -hmm. it's uh, you can't read anything. Cantor is here. By the way, Keith, we do need to have you on so you guys can do like a Danzig off, if you will. Um, but you'd have to call in on your smartphone need a stronger Yeah, this uh, isn't it this week. Point, so it's not going to happen this week. Plus, I'm working on it, kid. I'm working on it. I'm always but working on it. it will happen very soon, I promise. I'm working on my evil, man. Even when you, like, try to be creepy, you're still pretty handsome, which, you know, is kind of infuriating, frankly. Um, Dave and Colin watched Red Dragon and Silence of the Lambs. We had a double feature when last night. My kid goes... to be getting on a better sleep schedule my and not kid's staying like, up all night. Hey, I'll never really watch Red Dragon. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, well, it, like it came after, it came, <laughs> it was written before Silence of the Lambs. But then they redid it after Silence of the Lambs with the Silence of the Lambs type people. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so they stayed up watching that. And then Dave wants and to watch... And we watched it um, end to end. It was, like, amazing that the kids sat there and, and, did and watched nightmares? the whole thing. No, no way. Nightmares. Hey, listen. Uh, I can see things from you. <laughs> Nikki T, when she came to visit us and we did a little social distancing hang, she said that you yelled at every car as it drove by, Slow down! Like a, like a you know, a typical dad, which you did. 
But yeah, when he get, hits the Charles timeline, he gets uh, he gets extra mouthy. No, here's what happened, all right, guys. And his accent goes bananas. Okay, kid. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we went by my old stomping grounds. Uh, my lovely girlfriend and uh, my life partner. My son. Uh, was was my son there? Yes. Okay. I have three of those, right? Well, uh, at anyway. last count, you had three, but so who knows? They walked ahead of me because they, you know, if, if it was a zombie apocalypse, I'd be the eaten one. It's just the way it is. But I didn't have the key car keys. I gave them to you. Yes. And we hadn't locked the car. Correct. And I know how you are about that. Yeah, except so the I car called... automatically locks when it, the key's not in the ignition and you walk away from the car. But anyway, go ahead. I called to you to lock the car. That's not why you were yelling. I watched no, you yelling me. at the car that you're not by. listening. I've been scolded. Okay. I told her, Angie, lock the car. And these three... No, you did not. You said, lock the car. Uh, I just don't see how that is uh, even a thing. <laughs> anyway, if I could finish my uh, story here, please. Mm, go right ahead. I, uh, I uh, was accosted by three young men who said that, hey, we don't appreciate that. Like breaking my chops, kidding about, I saw them and I told you to lock the car. And I, and I said to them, ha I didn't even see you there. Hey, lock it twice! Charles That's Town, what I everybody. Said. That's what I said. Thank you. Acting! <sighs> anyway, I've been... Is that the show? That is oh, the show. Been... Oh, um, that went by quick. Who's been watching Cobra Kai since it was put on Netflix? Because you had to pay for it on YouTube. Joan Jett, brother. Joan Jett. Even I watched, if I can't get none. I watched the first season on YouTube when it came out because we had a free trial, right? But after that, I didn't want to pay for it, so I didn't see it. So the two seasons are now on Netflix and another chef's kiss fantastic I mean, what a chef's kiss it, yeah they do you a chef's kiss no it's back me up here people it's a thing is it Mwah. yes but when you're fine doing social media posts you have to actually say chef's kiss do it again, I'll stab you Like some of the news we got today about, you know, certain people in a certain administration. Mm. Also, uh, we will have no gender reveal parties. Those are canceled. Like, for good. Forever. And we're back! Sorry, guys. I know uh, there's going to be a lot of editing in the Abington Community Access um, HQ because of a weak... Weak, weak Wi-Fi signal. I do apologize. Gabby Walsh is here. Hello, my cousin. Man, that is a weak signal, man. Look at that signal. <laughs> that signal is weak, man. Uh, so Cobra Kai, yes, it's silly. Uh, there are some touchy moments. Billy's a Who knew? Who knew I'd like him a lot more than Ralph Macchio? Oh, my God, so much more. Um, and the music, obviously, is great. And uh, that sort of takes us right into what we listened to this week, because uh, we were in the car quite a bit this weekend, and I have um, a playlist that I've been taking to the beach with me, you know, like my big stack of records. <laughs> Kidding! Uh, but there's a lot of uh, 80s rock on there, including... There's a lot of palm muting, for uh, guys who know. John Waite Change. And again, sorry about that. So, um, one of the songs on the beach playlist is Change by John Waite. Which, you're surprised. Well, it's a very near and dear song to us. When we, oh, we were first it. dating uh, and talking about music, that particular song, we would play songs back and forth for each other. Mm -hmm. um, like foreplay, really, let's be honest. Uh, and that was one of them. And it's just one of those songs that, like, it's like comfort food and it just reminds you of a certain age and a certain time and it's... It's awesome, and, and we were trying to figure out who played guitar on the track, and looked it up, and it's a cover. I did not know it was a cover. Mm -hmm. Not only is it a cover, but it was written by Holly Knight, who at that point, uh, her band Spider, I believe, recorded it, and then a year later, 
John Waite leaves his band, and yep. does a solo thing, covers the song, and it, it does not do that well. It does well two years later because it's on Vision what soundtrack? Quest. That's right. Uh, and then we decided to look up Holly Knight to see what other songs she wrote. Pretty much everything. Now wait a minute. In didn't, the eighties. Now wait a minute. Didn't didn't Neil Giraldo uh, he produced, produced the, the John Waite? Yes. The John Waite version of Change. Well, that now, whole album. Now Neil Giraldo is Pat Benatar's longtime husband. Guitar player, co-writer, co-producer. Co co yeah. Okay, but then you went to look, and so didn't, all the songs that this Holly Knight wrote, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, Tina she Turner, had her hands. Uh, Eighties, uh, the Divinals. You better be good to me. Yep. Right. Yep. Simply the best. Um, the Divinals, Pleasure and Pain. Pat Benatar, her, some of her biggest hits. In Love is a Battlefield. Um, I think that was her biggest hit, actually. And then, from the legend of Billie Jean. Invincible. She um, wrote that. So, we went down the legend of Billie Jean rabbit hole as well, because that is the best, worst Look movie. Look, I'm not, I'm not a so huge fan, good. okay? But Helen, Fair is fair! Helen Slater, though. Uh, I also got that haircut. She, she chops all her hair off. And, I wanted, uh, oh man. She's just secret, like raw, raw, raw. The secret raw. of my success, Helen yeah. Slater. I totally chopped all Whatever my hair off. Whatever happened after to that Helen movie. Slater. Yeah. I don't know what happened to Helen oh, Slater. Oh, she was magical. Secret of my success, Supergirl, and Legend of Billie Jean. What else? Oh, um, uh, Ruth. Was it Ruthless People? Yes, she right, was in Ruthless right? People. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then not so not much. Not a whole lot, I don't no. think. We'll have hmm. to look her up. Um, We're going to have to look it up. So those are the kinds of things that Dave and I do in the car. Honestly, that's our life. Um, the Divinals, uh, Pleasure and Pain, Holly Knight wrote. Sidebar, the best Divinal song is called Ring Me Up, and it was in 16 Candles. Do yourself a favor, write it down right now, and go play it after the show, and turn it up really, really loud. Mike Maloney's here. Hey, Mike Maloney. Wrote, uh, we apologize in advance. The uh, live virtual studio audience is is marred with uh, bad Wi-Fi, so I, I apologize. Yeah, so she wrote songs for Aerosmith, Heart. Oh, yeah. Um, Rod Stewart. Basically, remember anybody that, who was on the charts in the Listen, 80s. Listen, I'm not going to hold it against her, but she wrote Love Touch, which is from uh, League of Eagles. <laughs> You're going deep there. The Deborah Winger, uh, Robert Redford uh, movie. With Daryl Hannah. Mm. <laughs> this is why we're so well suited for each other. Um, so what else were we listening to? Well, there's a great story that popped up in my Facebook feed from Elliot Easton of The Cars. And he posts a picture of the candy show, who was also a model for like some kind of tire company back in, back the, in the day, in the yeah. late 70s, early 80s. And, Late 70s, I'd say. Yeah. Um, she became the subject of, uh, well, she, uh, Vargas, the, the artist, the pinup artist that they hired to do the cover for Candio, they... Which is in like a, in like a sheer leotard on the hood yeah, show, of a show Ferrari. Yeah, what it looks like. What does she look like? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Listen. Uh, Tony Katane's foremother. Yeah. So, um, the drummer of the Cars was a huge pinup artist uh, fan. Dave and, Robinson? Uh, yeah. And he loved um, Alberto Vargas and the Vargas pinup girls. Keith Bennett, I know that you love this as well. Um, so, they did a photo shoot. So, Elliot Easton posts pictures of the photo shoot that the cover is actually based on, and mm. it's pretty, like, spot on. He didn't really embellish much. The, you know, the photos were ridiculously hot. But it was cool just to go through uh, the comments and find out, like, how did they get that girl? Well, she was dating the drummer, and the drummer was really into fast cars. And he went to a Ferrari dealership and did the photo shoot. And then Vargas painted her on a, uh, a very specific Ferrari, I guess, which, you know, this is the gearhead I'm not, so I don't know which one. But that was kind of cool that, like, we learned new and exciting things about a very legendary Boston Yeah, band. I kind of thought it was a Daytona, but it's not. I was surprised no. by it. 
it's a it's a Ferrari. Ferrari. Also, Candy Moore, who is Candy O, uh, played Lucille Ball's on-screen daughter on the Lucy Show, which, which was is weird. Well, right? after I Love Lucy, but it was kind of cool that there was that connection as well. Um, Dave had promised to sing the uh, classics this week. Yeah, Our but new I, feature I, it, sings the classics. We had a very it, rough week. A, yeah, it was a really rough week. Um, yeah, lots and of I things, just feel including like the, the, the I can show you my tooth right now. Eh, it looks awful. Um, so he's going to save the Henry Rollins Sings the Classics until less, next week, I think. Although you could do a little liar. Oh, jeez. Is there, is there 28 minutes left in this show? <laughs> I don't know. I thought we were wrapping it up. I thought we were wrapping it up. Uh, this is literally the second time today that Holly and the Italians have come up in social media yep. discussions. Interesting. There's actually an urban myth that the model is actually Jeanette Cook. Uh, was she um, a local Boston Band-Aid, perhaps? I don't know who that is. You'll have to tell me who that is. Um, I think that, you know, the the woman that was in the photo that it's like based her. the portrait it's, on it's is her. her. So yeah. I, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. That vicious rumor you're trying mm. to uh, propel, mm. Keith Bennett. Um, so, no Henry Rollins today? No? We could do a little liar. I mean, you are... I, mean, I don't want to do that. Oh, uh, tw guess what today is the anniversary of? You're not... You, wait, are you ready to feel old? 26 years ago today, the Green Day Massacre... The Riot on the Hat Shell. Our Welcome Back Students FNX show that we all almost died at. <laughs> yeah, there should be like 5,000 people there. Um, it was the perfect storm of timing. <laughs> Having a program director who knew music really well and knew how to smell uh, a hit from a mile away in the alternative music genre. Kurt St. Thomas, the same guy that, you know, begged our then program director, Max, to add Nirvana out of the box, which we did and, and sort of made history for. So uh, leading up to the uh, Welcome Back Students, I can't remember, we had an official name for it, and it escapes me right now. Um, the phones were off the hook. Like, we could not, I was doing part-time radio and answering phones, and, and like, you had to shut the phones off to get any work done. Everybody was calling about this show. How do we get there? What exit do we take? Do you know? Is it free? So it's a free show with Green Day on the Hat Shell. Two months prior, nobody knew who Green Day was outside of San Francisco. Uh, and then they play um, Woodstock, the mud slinging Woodstock. Dookie was huge. And they blow up, but we've already booked them for a free show in the Hat Shell, and it was an absolute. Didn't Juliana Hatfield and the Mises open up, I think? I so, don't know. I've seen Juliana there at the hat show, but I, it wasn't that uh, time. I'm pretty sure she... Uh, the Mises definitely opened up, I remember that. Uh, but the Mises? I, uh, I was new in the... I still was sort of a baby FNXer at the time, and I decided to bring my uh, little brother Danny to the show. It was his first concert, and we stood uh, behind some barricades. Bob Tarasi was there. On the side... And um, Billy Joe comes out. I mean, literally within like the first five notes, the barricades go down and it's complete mayhem. Now, my brother and I were in like a VIP section. We were supposed to be on the stage, but like, um, I don't know if it was a politician or the chief of police, somebody's daughter took our spaces up there, like mm. some big wig much higher up. Mm. So we were over behind barricades. I'm like, well, we're perfectly safe. This will be fine. The state police run that place. <laughs> it went it went completely nuts immediately. And I remember holding on to my brother Danny, who wasn't even, I think he was still in high school. And we were holding on to each other, and our feet were not touching the ground. That's how many people, that was the smushy crowd situation. It was nuts to this day. I have a problem with crowds like that, and I have to like move away because it was it was terrifying, but also exhilarating and, and crazy and fun. And um, you know, there's there's quotes from everybody, and of course, Ty's getting up there. Everybody take three steps back. And it's like nobody's doing anything. 
And they got through like two and it or was three like, songs and wah, that was wah. it. But uh, we were all there and uh, yeah, that actually happened and that was 26 years ago today. So anyway, long story short, man, you're old as dirt. <laughs> I'm quite old. Quite, quite old. I mean everybody out there. MK Cully! Nice to see you. Sorry for the Wi-Fi problems this evening. Uh, hopefully they can fix it in post. <laughs> as uh, you can watch us on the old YouTube Oh my God, as there's well. so much more to talk about. What? We haven't even talked about food yet. Oh, and somebody's cooking in the house. I can smell it and it drives me crazy. No, it's outside. No, it's not it smells like toast or something. It smells like somebody's burning popcorn in the house across the way. No, that's probably our house. Um, uh, somebody's roasting their own coffee beans. I did not cook because I couldn't chew. So I left most and of the cooking to him. And it's all about her. To him. And most of the cooking were uh, hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill. Yeah, well, we had people over. That was hamburgers and hot dogs. So normally, uh, and not to freak out any of you vegans or vegetarians, but I normally have one or two hot dogs a year. He brought home the Dietz and Watson hot dogs. Yeah. Like the hot dogs to the stars. These are quite large. Um, and they're all beef and they're um, delicious. Pretty much the best hot dogs you've ever had. I think I've already had like six so far. And I've had a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> so then we I have, don't like to brag, but I've had, had a lot of hot dogs my, in my day. We have my dad and my brothers and their significant others over. And what did they bring? Hot, hot dogs. dogs. So if anybody needs a hot dog, our freezer is packed and we're kind of done. Uh, so come by and we'll give you a package they of brought, hot dogs. They brought uh, Omaha steak hot dogs, right? Yes. Which and I was like, get I these know. away from me. Yeah. We did uh, pull off another successful secret date night with a little secret Asian cuisine mm -hmm. and uh, away from the children. Although uh, we finally got to use our new chopsticks. I actually bought some uh, bamboo and some metal chopsticks. Yeah. It's like 10 pairs, five and five. Because Dave really likes to use chopsticks for like almost everything, mm -hmm. and he's always like, "Where's the chopsticks? Where's They're the awesome to chopsticks? scratch yourself with. Uh, uh, you know, so like maybe was... like there's a scab on your toe. <laughs> You're really good for pulling scabs off your toes. So that was um, that was the exciting part of uh, Secret Date Night. We when we went over. greatest um, bull terrier Rocco they made Greek yogurt okay guys in the they made yogurt in a pressure cooker that's a thing all right it's like a thing okay and they pull out this thing out of the fridge all right so it's, it's like, like it's like a bunt cake that's been squished right okay and then it's got it's elongated like a racetrack you're showing people off camera there you go all right, so anyhow, it's got a handle in the middle, and you pull it up and out, and it's it leaves a the it leaves the water the way the way. Hi. Oh, hi. We're back. Wow. Sorry, we're get, we're definitely gonna end early because this is a nightmare. And I we apologize. actually what we've gotten down to a science, guys, is when it goes black, we stare at it until it comes back on. <laughs> Jeff Williams, we I have love you. Hi, we Jeff have Williams. exactly what to do. We don't know what to do. You know, I wish we had, like, a board op or somebody here. We pay a ton of money for super high-speed internet because we have gamers in the house and whatever. And it still does this all the time. So we have to figure out a better solution. So I apologize for the crappy Wi-Fi. But it is, we are supposed to be getting some weather and that may have a little... Um, so we Greek yogurt in the pressure cooker. You have to use a very specific kind of milk, though, You right? have to... See, do we say the name? Um, no, it's just an organic raw milk, right? No, it's a very specific, ultra-pasteurized, ultra-filtered milk. All right, that's all you need to say. Okay. You don't have to do a, a right. brand name. So it's like you have to seed it. You have to seed the yogurt. I don't know what that means. You have to seed it. So what you do is you take one scoop of yogurt. Yes. And you put that in there with the ultra-pasteurized, super-duper-filtered Stuff. Oh, I And then see. you do it. And right. that, and then the acidophilus or whatever it's called. Okay. Right? The good the good uh, critters, they, you know, it's like a urban renewal. Keith is making fun of us that we're pressure cooker explaining now. Sorry, Keith. It was really 
really good. It was uh, it was really thick Greek yogurt, which I like very much. I like things that are thick. <laughs> so shoot me. <laughs> uh, and that's about it. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up early just because it's the Wi-Fi is just totally insane. Um, I do want to mention that we are going to be hosting a benefit for once. Um, we're joining uh, Smitty E. Smitty and the Fez Tones were uh, kind enough to ask us to host this benefit. How about Smit E. Smitty? It's Smit E. Smitty. Didn't I say that? You said Smitty E. Smitty. I'm you sorry. had an extra it's, E. It's Smit E. Smitty. Now he has to take that back to the store. Gene Dante's, Dante's on the bill and uh, John Palaida. Really? You're going to laugh at me because I just said that? You're super sweet. Uh, we'll be talking more about that. That is towards the end of the month. I believe it's Saturday the 26th, but we'll be talking all about that in uh, the next couple of shows to go. Vicky makes yogurt all the time using her Instant Pot. You can use any kind of milk as long as you have a good starter. See? Licky. There you go. Uh, Licky. <laughs> you just got Vicky. You're a jerk. How does it feel? You're so icky. Oh my god. Bradley Wright is here. I love you, Bradley. Just as we're ending the show because our Wi Fi is terrible. Bradley, Bradley White is here? <laughs> so, uh, thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Obviously, the Wi Fi was not ideal, but you can check the replay and we'll try to edit this as much as possible. We didn't even get to lobster rolls. No, we did not. Uh, Abington god, Community Access mind. Television, okay. if you have it, it's at 9 p.m. on Friday nights, Verizon Channel 28, Comcast Channel 13. And you can watch all of the episodes, this is episode 10, oh, um, on their YouTube page. And we have all of those links for you later on on this post. Thank you guys all, uh, and um, Bob Tarasi, again, thank you for always being here and, and taking our advice, which is cool. He'll actually, like listen and watch things that we recommend yeah he's got I, problems i think is great um that so, guy i mean like again I mean, uh save the date you're September listening 26 to us. for the once uh smith e smitty and the fez tones benefit show to benefit once and we will have more details on that next week and we love you guys.